sin and shame Don't count anymore All praise to the one Who has ransomed my soul Calvary covers it all No power The Power of God Part 2. If you have not watched The Power of God Part 1, please go on my YouTube page and just type Eric Habwele The Power of God Part 1 and it will come. And I would advise you to pause this one to go to the first one so that you can join in because I'm just going to continue from where I ended in part one. So now, The Power of God Part 2. Now, in part one, we talked to say, the power of God, the power of God is the word of God. The power of God is the word of God itself. And then we, we, we quoted many scriptures which helped us to see what is the power of God. Now we are going to continue with this. Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1 verse 16, the scripture says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jews face and also to the Greek. So here it is saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power. So meaning the power of God, the power of God is the word of Christ itself. And then we differentiated, you say, not only the, the, the uh, you know, it says, uh, but the, the, the power of I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power. Meaning, it, it did not just say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, but it, it specified it. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Meaning, it, it is not the gospel of Christ, it is not the power of God. Only the gospel of Christ, only the gospel of Christ is the power of God. Only the gospel of Christ is the power of God. Now it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, unto salvation. Now, this is where the power of God, where the word of God takes you to. The word of God takes you to a place called salvation, a place called salvation. Now, the word salvation there is taken from a Greek word called soteria, soteria. And soteria, it means preservation. Soteria means preservation, meaning when the word of God comes to you or when you are born again, because when you accept the word, when the word of God comes in you, it makes you born again. So when you are born again, you become preserved. You become preserved. You become preserved from the powers of Satan. You become preserved from all the molestation of an enemy. And then the same word, which is Soteria, it also means safety. It means safety, meaning if you are born again, if you are born again, you are safe. If you are born again, you are safe. You've got not to be afraid of anything. You've got not to be afraid of anything. The Bible says, for we have not received the spirit of fear. But we have received the spirit of boldness. Why? Because this is what the word of God produces in you. It produces boldness. It produces confidence. The Bible says, this is the confidence that we have in Him. This is the confidence that we have in approaching His throne. That if we ask anything according to His will, He always hears us. He always hears us. Why? Because His word gives us confidence. We have hope. Why? Because His word has given hope unto us. Everything that we need is part of His word. Why? Because His word is self-contained. A believer can never look for anything outside the word of God. Anything that does not come from the word of God is not of God. Amen. So, also, 
the, 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 the word soteria, it means deliverance from the molestation of an enemy. Deliverance from the molestation of an enemy, meaning the word of God is the one which brings deliverance in you. Outside the word of God, there is no deliverance. Deliverance is in the word of God, meaning when you are a child of God, or when you are born again, when you have Christ in you, there is no any other deliverance which you need. The deliverance took place. The deliverance of God in your life took place. You know what? What is deliverance? The Bible says in the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 to 14, the Bible says that giving thanks unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath uh, delivered us and has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear Son. So this tells us to say, deliverance is the movement. Deliverance is the shifting from the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of his dear Son. Meaning, by the time you receive the word of God in you, by the time you received Jesus in you, you became born again. Before you were born again, you were under the domain of Satan. You were under the influence of the powers of Satan. But when you became born again, there was a transition which took place. You were shifted from the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So now, the deliverance, the deliverance which is commended for a believer or for a righteous man is not the casting out of devils from them. The deliverance which is recommended from a child of God is the deliverance from ignorance. The Bible says, An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So the only deliverance that is recommended for the just is the deliverance from ignorance. Deliverance from ignorance. Now, also, this word salvation, which is soteria, it also encompasses, it, it also contains uh, healing, healing. It also contains, you know, prosperity, good, healthy. All these are packaged in what in soteria, which is in salvation. If you are saved, all these are yours legal. Why? Because Jesus attained them for you. Now, see, see what the Bible says from the book of uh, Peter. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. Scripture says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath, that hath called us to glory and virtue, according as his divine power, what is the power of God? The power of God is the word of God. Or the power of God is Christ himself now. According as his divine power uh, hath given unto us all things. So, the word of God, the word of God gives us all things. The word of God gives us all things and it gave us all things. By the time you became born again, you were given all things that pertains to life and that which pertains unto godliness. That which pertains unto godliness is righteousness, holiness, sanctification, you know, purification. All these things, you don't attain them anymore by your working. You don't attain them, attain them anymore by you being good. You don't attain them anymore by you trying to fast, trying to do any other thing. No, 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 no. You attain them as a gift. It is part, it, it, it came at, it came together with the word of God which came in you. The word of God is holy. When the holy word of God came in you, it made you to become holy. So, the, the, what you need for you to, to, to be God is holiness, all this sanctification, and they came unto you. The Bible says that Christ has been made unto us the righteousness of God. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. We are the righteousness of God. Now are we the righteousness of God. Why? Because this is the what this is what the word of God produces in us. Now see, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge, through the knowledge, meaning 
All these things are given to us, yes. But they only manifest when we begin to acknowledge them. They only manifest when we acknowledge them. They only manifest when we become aware of them. Meaning, there is a need of us to know that which we have been given. When we know that which we have been given, we walk in them. That's why, today you see, a lot of people who are born again, but... You know, they, they, they live a life like they are possessed. They live a life like they are cased. No, no, no. It's not that they are cased. They just don't know something. They don't know something. They don't know what belongs to them. And by the time they will, they, they, they will know that, they will realize they will go and get it and they will enjoy it. You know, you are, you, you are suffering and you are, you are pampering, just suffering, saying it is from God. Because you don't know. When you realize to say he became poor, that you may be rich, you won't pamper that, that poverty anymore. Why? Because you have become a lead of what Christ has done for you. And then it continues by saying, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the, uh, in the world through lust. Now, see, the word partaker, the word partaker is a Greek word called koinonia. Koinonia. And koinonia, it means, it means, you know, a sharer. It means somebody who takes part. Meaning, this is what the word of God has made out of you. It has made you to be a partaker of divine nature. Meaning, without you, divinity is incomplete. Meaning, you have become part of the holy family. You have become part of the saints. And says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. Meaning, if your mother, your biological mother, she died with cancer, you have escaped that cancer. If your biological father, he died with diabetes, and they are saying it is in your family, it is not part of you. Why? Because you, you have escaped that. You have escaped all these things that are in this world through last. You see? So, you as a child of God, you are you are cutting the power of God, which is the word of God. The Bible says, if the spirit of, of, of him that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in your mortal body, he shall sustain your mortal body. So, what killed any, any member of your family will not be part of you. Why? Because something great in you, it is at work. Now, see, that is why most of the prayers of Apostle Paul for the church, they were the prayers of knowledge. Paul, he prayed for the church that they may know what Christ has provided. That they should know who they are in Christ. Because he knew to say, when they know who they are in Christ, they will begin to operate in knowledge. When they know who, who, who Christ is to them and what Christ has provided, they will operate in knowledge. Now, let us examine the prayers of Apostle Paul. What were the prayers of Apostle Paul uh, 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 for us? Now, uh, uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter 1, verse 9, the scripture says, And this I pray, that your love may, may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. In knowledge, he was praying that you may know, that you may know. And the word knowledge there is not like a knowledge, like for, 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 for natural things. No, no, no. This word knowledge is a quote called, called epignosis. Epignosis and epignosis means accurate, precise, collect, revealed knowledge of God. This is not a, a doting about nothing. This is not try and error. This is a specific, clear knowledge of God. So you see, when you possess this knowledge, you begin to operate in power. When you possess this knowledge, you begin to move in power. Why? Because this is the knowledge which triggers power. You know, see, power, the power of God, the power of God is the word of God. The power of God is the word of God. Now, it's like you have an AK-47 gun with you. And you don't know how to use it. And then thieves, they come in your house. They attack you. 
that AK-47 can never wake at all. Why? Because you have no knowledge about it. But by the time you know how to use that AK-47, even from afar, when a thief comes, you trigger the gun. Why? Because you have knowledge about it. Also, it is with the word of God. You may be born again, a child of God, tongue speaking, Holy Ghost filled. But if you are blank of the word of God, you cannot operate in power. These people who, if you, you don't have the word of God, you will be the proponent of of, of these whereby whenever they hear that there is a prophet you go there they are turning water into in, in, into petrol you go there they are turning soil into whatever you go why because you lack something but when you are filled with the knowledge of the word of god you have a stamina to stand in the word of god let the word of god be your stance let the word of god be your stance now so the prayer of apostle paul was that you may be filled with the knowledge the epignosis of Christ, the epignosis of Christ. Now, Philemon, Philemon chapter 1, verse 6, the scripture says that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. That the communication of your faith, that the communication of thy faith. Now, see, the word Communication there, the word communication there is taken from a Greek word called koinonia. Koinonia. And koinonia, it means participation. Participation. So he was trying to say that the, that, that, that the participation of your faith, the participation of your faith may become effectual. And the word effectual is taken from a Greek word called energies. And energies, it means powerful, meaning that the participation of your faith will become powerful by or when you acknowledge when you acknowledge now the same word the word acknowledge there is a Greek word called epignosis which we are just from saying which is the accurate correct precise reviewed knowledge of God so when when uh, uh, that the the participation of your faith may become powerful when you acknowledge the good things that are in you meaning when you acknowledge what christ has done when you acknowledge what christ has done your faith it finds its participation and when, you, when your faith finds its participation it becomes powerful or when you realize what christ has done your faith becomes powerful when your faith becomes powerful you begin to participate how, how do i mean by saying you begin to participate whereby if you are sick you are sick, you begin to command sicknesses to leave your body. If there is somebody sick in your area, you begin to take charge, you go to pray for them. If something goes wrong, you stand, you pray. Why? Because your faith is not taking charge. Why? Because you have acknowledged something, that something happened in you. Amen, somebody. So, there is a need. There is a need of you acknowledging or knowing. Again, see, it continues by saying, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. See, where are you? You are in Christ. The scripture says, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Meaning, a believer is in Christ. And there, in Christ, a believer, because he is in Christ, everything in him is good. See there, there it says, Acknowledging of every good thing which is in you. Meaning in you there is every good thing. Meaning cancer is not a good thing. Malaria is not a good thing. You know, uh, uh, diabetes is not a good thing. Meaning those things they are foreigners to your body. Meaning whenever such things have comes into your body, the scripture says you have the power to flush them out. You have the power to command them out. That is why there is a need of you realizing the power of God in your life. When you realize the power of God in your life, you begin to take charge. You begin to operate in power. So everything in a believer is good. Everything in a believer is good. You know, believers who are doing wayward things, believers who are prostituting, Believers who are stealing, believers who are insulting, believers who does all kind of wayward thing. That is not who they are. They are pretending. I'm telling you, they are pretending.
The nature they are carrying in them is the nature of God. Therefore, they have decided, they, they, they have decided to go and pick some other things to make them part of them, which is not. Let me tell you something. No matter how long a man wears a skirt, he will never become a woman. So this is what these, uh, these believers who are misbehaving are doing. By the time they realize, see, that's not who they are, what do they do? They put off that which they do and they begin to walk in a straight line. See, the Bible talks of a prodigal son that he had gone a wayward. But when he came back to his senses, meaning most of, not even most, every believer who is acting that way, he is acting out of, of his senses. He is acting out beside himself, paralagismo in a Greek word. They are acting beside themselves. That's why they, when, 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 when they begin to know, when they realize, when they come back to their senses, they move out of all, all, that, all, all that act. Now, how can they know? Only the word of God can be able to reveal them to themselves. The Bible says the word of God is a mirror. The word of God is a mirror, and the, 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 the job of the mirror is to reflect you, to you. When you reflect yourself in a mirror, what do you do? You begin to make some adjustment. The mirror will tell you, you know, this side, your makeup is not balanced, this side, your powder is not balanced, and what you do, you begin to make proper adjustment, not until you are fixed. So, we collect these believers by the word of God, and when they see themselves in the word of God, they begin to make adjustment. They begin to make adjustment. They begin to make adjustment until they arrive at the place of an answer. That's why Apostle Paul, his prayer was that we may know. We may know. Even, even, even Peter, Peter, this was his prayer too. His prayer too was that we may know. See, the Bible says in the book of First uh, John, First John chapter 5, verse 13, Scripture says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. He was writing these things to believers. He thought he was saying, These things have I written unto you, believers. Why did he write these things? That ye may know that ye have eternal life. I am praying, or I'm, pray, or I'm writing this for you to know that you have. Not for you to have, for you to know that you have, because you already have. You already have. So wherever you are watching me from as a believer, you have eternal life. You have the life of God. You have the life of God. The word of God is the one which reveals everything in your life. Amen, somebody. Hello, viewers all over the world. This is all I had for you. Hope you are blessed by the little I've shared with you. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Eric Havere as it is showing there on the screen. Also, my line, you can contact me on the line which is showing on the screen there. My vision is painting the broom marble planet with the gospel of Christ. Hey, bring a lot to this faith. Bring a lot to this side that we together, we may paint the broom marble planet with the gospel of Christ. God bless you. Yeah.